Uh, so I'm originally from France. Uh, I started my career in academia about 15 years ago. I was doing physics research at CERN, the big physics lab in Switzerland. Uh, eventually, I moved to the U.S. in 2014 when I joined Instacart, a, a grocery delivery company. After four years uh, at Instacart, I joined Cruise, uh, the self-driving car company uh, based in San Francisco. Built all sorts of systems, infrastructure, and backends to support all of the machine learning and data science teams at Cruise. And uh, we were able to support the commercial launch of the Cruise cars. So now Cruise has Robo taxis going around the city uh, of San Francisco, Austin, and Phoenix. Training those models requires a lot of infrastructure because you have to uh, consume a large amount of data that's been collected by the cars, transform this data into feature data sets, train large uh, neural net models. Sometimes, you know, the training jobs can last for many hours or many days, uh, and then estimate performance metrics uh, and so on. Uh, so that requires a lot of infrastructure to run those pipelines. So we built all the, the tooling so that uh, engineers could easily train those models. Um, I left Cruise in April 22 uh, and founded Sematic. Uh, so the idea behind Sematic is to bring the learnings that we gathered from working at Cruise for four years to the rest of the industry uh, and also make it open source. Got into Y Combinator for the summer batch. Uh, so we did the S22 batch, uh, graduated in September. Uh, we raised a seed round. Uh, we raised about $3 million in September, uh, and that enabled us to grow the team. So now we're a team of five engineers, uh, four of which are ex-cruise engineers. Uh, and so now we are, our target is to build a, a fully hosted SaaS product on top of the open source platform that we built so far. So that's roughly where we are at this time. We launched the product in, in July. So you know, July 1st, we had yeah, zero stars. And uh, right now we're almost at 700, I think it's 660 stars by now. Be happy about it. Obviously, as I mentioned, that's not necessarily an indicator of success, but um, so being part of Y Combinator was very helpful to, to get started with those stars because when you're part of YC, you get access to Hacker News. I'm sure you, you know Hacker News. Um, and you know, getting on the front page of Hacker News is very difficult usually, but when you're part of YC, they uh, give you uh, almost a guaranteed spot on the front page for about 12 hours, like for one day, basically you get to your launch. Uh, and that typically, if your product is good, that gathers a lot of comments and a lot of stars as well. Uh, so that was very helpful to get us started. Uh, and now, you know, we we get those stars by, you know, getting on newsletters, on podcasts like this one, for example, uh, or other types of, you know, LinkedIn as well as a good source. Also a lot of like email marketing and so on. Um, so that's for GitHub stars. Uh, then in terms of, of revenue, as I mentioned, you know, we're very early at this time. So we do have a little bit of revenue, but nothing really to brag about uh, because we're still in the phase of figuring out product market fits. Uh, another um, sort of metrics of growth is the, the team itself. So, you know, I'm a solo founder, so I started by myself. And now we're a team of five engineers uh, and four of which, including myself, are ex-cruise engineers. So uh, I was able to attract uh, very senior talent from cruise and, and other companies. Uh, you know, if we look at all the pedigree of the team, you know, we've worked at Cruise, Instacart, Adobe, Microsoft, Google, um, and, and so on. So Adobe as well. So a very a group of very skilled engineers, uh, which gives me a lot of confidence as to our ability to build a very good product. Uh, so we did hire an infrastructure engineer that we didn't know before. And the way we hired him was also to leverage the YC network. So, uh, you know, YC has a job board. So when you're a YC company, you can post a uh, job listing there. And because it's it's very popular amongst developers, you get a lot of inbound um, so sort of um, uh, applicants for, for your job listings. So that worked well for, for engineers, group partners. So you have four of them. Uh, and they typically try to assign you partners that have expertise in the area of your company. So not necessarily you know, machine learning in our case, but at least open source or developer tools. Uh, and so, uh, for example, for us, uh, one of our group partners was uh, Nicolas de Seigne, who is uh, actually a French founder, uh, who founded Algolia, this very big search company. So, you know, if you use, if you, you know, any, almost every search out there in every, uh, like Gitbook, for example, or, or Hacker News, or many other uh, uh, companies are using Algolia for their search, it's very powerful. 
Uh, and so uh, Nicolas Dussain has a lot of experience uh, building a developer tool into a unicorn company and, and making it like the, the standard. So they've, they had experience, uh, you know, growing successful companies in the past so they can tell, you know, what mistakes not to make. And that's really the big thing about YC is that those people have seen hundreds, if not thousands of companies before. Some of them fail, some of them succeed. And so they can tell you the general mistakes that people make and that you need to avoid. Uh, you know, for example, you know, don't hire too fast, don't spend your money too fast, uh, focus on your product and getting customers first and, and so on, which seem like, you know, obvious advice when you hear it like that. But uh, it's not so obvious when you're, you know, knee deep in the, in the work uh, and you know, your head down and you're not, you know, looking up. So this is very valuable. What has changed? What is different now? If you could put your finger at it, it seems like, you know, building an open source or open core company, uh, there's something different the last few years. Uh, how would you describe that? Yeah, so I think, uh, so my view is probably biased because uh, this is the first time that I work for an open source company. Um, but I think for a long time, the industry was seeing open source as like, oh, it's a cute little thing, you know. Even though, you know, large products like Linux, for example, is open source and the almost the entire world is running on Linux. All of the cloud infrastructure is running on Linux. So open source is definitely not a gimmick. Uh, it's something definitely unique. You look at other industries, nobody is working for free or giving giving out their source for free. If you think about, you know, like, let's say architecture or, or construction, like things outside of software, very few industries are giving away their sort of special sauce for free for everybody to look at, right? Everything is closed outside of software. So it's a very unique behavior uh, uh, that's only maybe in research in academia, you know, where it's basically the base, the baseline, you know, everything is public because you're like actually writing papers and you have to publish your methods to prove that that uh, you did the, the, the work correctly. Um, so open source software is a very unique practice. And I think for a long time, it was seen as like, Oh yeah, it's cute. It's a way to attract developers. You know, uh, if if companies uh, release you know a bit of tooling, open source is basically just a, a way for them to grow their uh, their recruiting brand and hire more engineers, which is great. Um, but I think in recent years, it's been there's been a shift, and now people see it as a very valuable way to have high quality products. Uh, because it's, there's a lot of scrutiny on open source software. You can uh, inspect the code and guarantee that it's high quality. So now it's, come, it's, it's moving from this recruiting tool to more of a pledge of quality, of guarantee of quality of, of the product. Uh, and it's also a proof of goodwill of the company. If you're an open source company, if you're, uh, it means that you aim to make money through additional services, through high quality service, not through just selling, you know, hacky code uh, to to sort of um, naive customers. No longer like this. It's basically your goodwill. You want to build a good product. And on top of that, you want the product to be so good that people are willing to pay for it, even though they could be using it for free. Um, so I think that's a bit of a shift in the last few years. I think you're right. Any piece of advice, any maybe, you know, mistake or... Uh, that yeah. That yeah, so... I think you have to be very humble as a as an open source founder because um, if somebody is going to read your code and find it not good, or, or uh, you know, you you have to really be open to criticism. You have to be very candid with feedback. This is actually a culture that we grew at Cruise, where uh, code review was extremely candid and, and direct. Uh, you know, sometimes when you read the the, the pull request and the code review, you're like, oh my god, those people are really rough with each other. We're always polite, obviously, but we don't sugarcoat things. You know, if something can be better, we we say it as it is. We always provide constructive criticism, but it means as a developer, you need to be humble. You, you, everybody thinks their code is the best ever, right? When you write code, you're so proud of it. You think that it's the best ever, that nobody will have any comments and you will be able to merge it right away. In the end, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You typically have, you know, days, weeks of review and at the end, your code is much better. So you have to know that even though you think that you're a good developer, um, there's always somebody that has a better idea. You have to be open to criticism, open to better ideas. Uh, and if you don't like the idea, you cannot just dismiss it. Oh, I don't like this. You have to have rational arguments why the solution is not optimal. And that forces you to review your own assumptions and to have good justifications for your choices. When you're closed source, you don't need to justify anything to anybody. You can just write your quote unquote shitty code and ship it out and nobody will know. Uh, so as an open source contributor, you need to be able to justify if somebody asks, oh, why did you choose this abstraction or this dependency or this a third party tool to do this? 
uh, why not this other way? You can't just say, eh, this is what we did. Uh, you have to say, well, because reason A, B, and C, and if we had chosen something else, this wouldn't be true and so on. You have to convince, you always have to convince other developers of the reasons why you did things. So you have to have some humility, even though you may think that you're the best developer in the world, you need to know that that's not the case and others have a lot of uh, value to bring you, even though they might be way more junior than you are. Uh, you know, we've met very young developers that were mind blowing in their uh, visionary uh, vision of, 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 um, of code. So uh, yeah, you have to be humble. So as an open source founder, uh, I would advise to always you know, be welcoming to uh, external contributors, even when sometimes you have shitty PRs that are coming in, you know, people that are writing a lot of code and are not very good. You, you have to basically carry them along and educate them uh, to get to a better spot. The same way that you would if it was a junior engineer on your team. Let's say, you know, you're, you're in a team and a junior engineer has been hired and their first PR is not so good maybe. You don't tell them this is terrible, uh, you're fired. You tell them, okay, let's work on it together. Let's begin, make it better. And over time, week after week, those developers get better and you don't need, and, and the amount of work you need to do to get their PR in a mergeable state is less and less. So uh, basically, you know, always be welcoming and inclusive of, of external people, regardless of their skills.